Thank goodness. You're awake. <sighs> you okay? Yeah. Where are we? Where I lived when I was still a child. Well, we've done something different here, haven't we? We weren't captured. In the original game, the characters okay? were captured Maybe and sort of presented to the president, and you have this scene where everybody goes unconscious and they wake up and all the people have been killed and Genova had escaped. In this, Cloud just sort of passes out and we wake up here. It's different. Can't say I like this any better, though. Don't scare us like that, man. My mom and I stayed here years ago when I was just a little girl. The room looks exactly the same. Every morning, they'd come and take my mom away. I remember crying here alone. Aerith, before we break out of here, talk to us. There's so much we don't know. I'm a descendant of the Ancients. That's pretty much it, really. Oh, but just so you know, that's not their actual name. They called themselves the Cetra. We who were born of the planet, with her we speak, her flesh we shape. Unto her promised land shall we one day return. By her loving grace and providence, may we take our place in paradise. You know it. Yeah, well, honestly, I thought that part was just a fairy tale. Mm. Shinra thinks it's true. They've been searching for the promised land for a long time. And they must think you can lead them to it. Can you? <sighs> Nope. Someday, maybe, I'll find it in me. But now, not even if I wanted to. Even if you could, that land belongs to the... I mean... To you and your people. Shinra's after it, because they believe it's rich in Mako. Mako, they've got no right to claim. But they'll try to take it anyway, won't they? <clears throat> Greedy bastards will never stop. Okay, new plan. Y'all take Aerith and get the hell out of here. Me, I'm gonna go bust some Shinra heads. Barrett, wait. You can't do that. Huh? <sighs> <sighs> oh, great. These assholes again. Probably some Shinra science experiment. Whispers. Perhaps best described as arbiters of fate. They are drawn to those who attempt to alter destiny's course and ensure they do not. Like capital D? Destiny? The flow of the great river that is the planet, from inception to oblivion. And you're saying that that flow is somehow... fixed? Yes. For it is the will of the planet itself. So if we're destined for a bleak future, these whispers will try to keep us on that course? Now wait just a damn minute. How in the hell can you possibly know any of that? Spouting that cryptic stuff, which could all be bullshit. I mean, ain't you a Shinra lab rat or dog? I'm not a rat dog. When Aerith reached out to me, I found this knowledge of the Whispers. Listen to me. Please. Aerith. The Shinra Electric Power Company isn't the real enemy. 
It started with them, sure. But I promise you, there's a much bigger threat. I just want to do everything in my power to help. All of you. And the planet. Aerith, what are you not telling us? I'm lost in a maze, and every step is taking me further from the path. Every time the whispers touch me, I lose something, a part of myself. <laughs> Follow them, the yellow flowers. find a way out together. Okay. Weird. you are. Rick, what are you doing, man? Hey, guys, long time no see. Wedge? You're here? You, you shouldn't be up and moving. I'm feeling much better thanks to Elmira's cooking. Ah, but that's not what I wanted to talk to you about. Listen, any moment now... <laughs> what was that? An explosion? Anomalous shimmer than temperature... HQ's running the show this time. They're raising hell to try and flush out the president. <laughs> This complicates matters. That explosion just now put the whole building on high alert. So now we're trapped in here? Engaging lockdown protocol. No need to panic, little lady. See? You can still move freely within Hojo's laboratory. Find a way to the roof. An avalanche chopper will come to extract you. HQ's bailing us out? I doubt it. Not after all the shit we've pulled. I asked them really nicely. Like, super-duper nicely. Thanks, Wedge. Just get to the roof, okay? Uh, oh? Uh, uh. Uh, I didn't ask him to do any of that. <sighs> yeah, well, I'm glad he did. Huh? <sighs> I'm gonna still chew him out for it later. The further we get into the story, the more and more it becomes obvious that there is there is a reason, a storyline reason for a lot of the changes that we're seeing between this and the original game. Aerith, every once in a while, has sort of made a couple of claims, or she's not really directly said anything. Which said, "Oh yeah, I know." how the other timeline played out, but she's giving hints that she's at least somewhat aware of it. She's talking about how, well, Shinra is not the big enemy here, and she wouldn't really have been aware of that. She didn't really know anything about Sephiroth before, before Cloud told her about him, or anything like that, in the original game, that is. And this, well, I'm not even clear I know what she's talking about here. Because... Sephiroth presented himself as an enemy, and it would eventually be the case that Sephiroth was trying to destroy the world in order to become something of a god. But we're looking at something different here. Maybe Sephiroth still has that same plan, but it seems like maybe he has something else in mind. Maybe that there's some other threat that he's fighting against as well. We don't really have enough information in this game, though. We're going to have to wait until the next release in the series. They get a better idea of what's happening. But either way, Aerith knows something. What happened here? The little ones in the pods. Where did they go? It stinks in here. Back there. Now what do we do? Some 
someone's picking a fight. So go give them one already. Way ahead of you. The test subjects breaking out was definitely something that happened in the unusual game. But they're kind of... It's more than just an insubstantial difference that Avalanche attacking had something to do with all the test subjects in Genova breaking out of its containment. So, I'm having a hard time sort of reconciling the story differences, the plot differences, separating this from the original game. And even those weird ghost wisp things aren't really feeling like they're good enough an explanation. Nice job. What? Shit! What the hell, Red? You know, I get the feeling that they kind of screwed up Red 13's personality in this game. Because in the first game, he was sort of like emotionally distant from the rest of the characters. He didn't really feel like he had any like skin in the game in regards to their fighting against uh, Sephiroth or Shinra or anything like that. He was just there fighting with them as a matter of convenience. They helped him escape. He traveled with them until he reached Cosmo Canyon and all that kind of stuff. So he wasn't that well invested in everybody else. He wasn't really friends with the people. And this, though, they make him out to be something of an asshole. So <laughs> I don't feel like Red 13 should be an asshole. An asshole. An asshole. What the hell's that? Let's go. Right. Oh. Hell is this place? Hojo's treasure. Shinra's dark secret. What I wouldn't give to burn it all down. But we need to get to the roof. Mother, together we will reclaim our world. I'm sick of this. Deny me. Embrace me. Oh, 
a touching reunion. Very, very good. And thus is the hypothesis proven correct. I can only hope you will continue not to disappoint. <laughs> okay, so it's time for a bit of a inconvenient perspective that changes between the different plots and between the two versions of the game. In the original game, the characters were captured and they were locked in holding cells. And during the night, a uh, an event happened. Genova broke free, killed a whole bunch of people, and killed the president, Shinra. Now, it's implied at the time that Sephiroth arrived and killed everybody. And then opened up the cell door and allowed them to escape for whatever reason. It's not revealed until pretty decent way until the second disc that Sephiroth was never there. That Sephiroth had been up at the northern cave the entire time for the past uh, for the past five years. He had been uh, after he'd been thrown into the life stream. He sort of coalesced there, and that's where he's been ever since. So he was never actually in the Shinra building. So all the times that he was seen before that event, you are actually seeing Genova. Genova having taken on his guys. Probably under Sephiroth's control, but it was definitely not Sephiroth himself traveling around. And it was also this sort of idea that maybe all, a lot of the people that were killed on in the Shinra building were actually killed by Cloud. Because Sephiroth had the ability to take control of Cloud's body to a certain extent. So while he was unconscious, Sephiroth took over his body, killed all these different people. Because clearly Genova didn't actually go all over that building and kill everybody. Anywhere where the blood streaks weren't at, Genova wasn't at. So everyone else probably killed by Cloud. Of course, there's a plot hole there where how did Cloud manage to get himself out of the cell? But, you know, ignoring all that, we can say happened was Cloud somehow got out of his cell after being... Uh, possessed by Sephiroth, broke Genova out of its containment, and then returned back to the cell where Genova went on a killing spree. You okay? Took out the president. Yeah. Where are the others? Nowhere close. Let's go. In this, though, we have an entirely different situation, because Sephiroth was observed by Palmer prior to even the arrival of Cloud, and prior to the. Uh, escape of Genova. So either it's some sort of a plot critical thing that the writers of this version of the game didn't understand or just ignored, or we're dealing with a different situation here. So Genova hasn't escaped yet, and all the test subjects escaped because of Avalanche's attack, not because Cloud, under Sephiroth's control, broke them out. So we're going way way off of the original story with this. And the further you get into this game, the further off the original storyline we deviate. I mean, you look at the fact that uh, Wedge is still alive. What is it? Wedge died during the collapse in the plate in the original game. He survived this. It's like, if we flip that switch, in fact, they try, to the other side. they try and go and redeem him a little bit because Wedge Maybe. seemed like of the Avalanche members the most useless of them. So it's sure. like, okay, yeah. Wedge is the useless fat guy. In this, he's kind of the same way, but he comes through for everybody and sort of rescues everybody to an extent, gets the rest of gets the rest of Avalanche, the larger Avalanche group that didn't really exist in the original game, to go and attack the HQ in order to break everybody out. <sighs> I can't say I'm. I really like the idea of Avalanche being a bigger organization we saw in the original game either, but you know it's a difference, and I'll reserve 
condemnation of the game until I see how that plays out in the sequel to this, the second chapter of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. But that may be a little while off.